And this time, it was particularly interesting because the Dalai Lama was there, among the other people that were <coughs> invited. That gave, us, uh, gave me, who also lived with the monks, a wonderful opportunity to interact with him and, and, and to see him. And uh, there were some really <coughs> exciting moments in, in, in our exchange. Uh, and, and, then he, uh, and then he said, but uh, the notion of, a cre of, a, of God as creator is a, is a great block between us and, uh, and you, between us and you, between us uh, Buddhists and you Christians, he said. And I said, this was my, my big chance. I had sort of waited for that for a very long time. <laughs> and I said, I don't think so, Your Holiness, because the interdependent arising okay. itself is divine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The interdependent arising itself is divine. That goes now, now I'm j jumping back to Cortona, to, to the high point of Cortona, because one for high point for me, because Michael von Brück, whom some of you know, uh, gave a talk there. Uh, he's a Buddhist scholar, he's a Christian himself, and a Buddhist scholar, a very uh, extremely learned man. And uh, he made a little remark, it was really only the answer to a question after his talk. And uh, he's, he's the upshot was this. Buddha did away with the notion of a creator God. Buddha did away with that. Uh, because at the time of Buddha, the Brahmans held this idea of a creator God and, uh, and had established a kind of pyramid where the creator God is the top of the pyramid, and the Brahmins come right after that. And so it goes down. When, whenever you have this God who is separated from us, the, the God that gives a little, the God of Michelangelo that touches the, the finger and gives a little spark and everything starts, the God that sets the big, big bang in motion, wherever you have this, this outside God that starts it all, uh, you get a kind of pyramid and some people are a little closer to him because it's always he in that case and so uh, they bow to the top and they tread on the bottom like bicyclists. And so, <laughs> and so the higher you're up on the pyramid, the more you're interested in this kind of, of sculpt, uh, structure. And Buddha wanted a egalitarian culture. That was the Sangha was absolutely egalitarian and therefore that was the basic reason why he wanted to do away with this notion of, of the Creator God and he said uh, if we believe in a Creator God then who created the Creator God and then who created the Creator God who created the Creator God so let's do away with all of, all of that all together. Uh, what happened was that whatever is arose together, interdependent with one another. Whatever came arose interdependent. That's what's called interdependent arising. Everything, alles hängt mit allem zusammen und uh, kommt zu sich selbst, so to say. And uh, therefore, this idea of interdependent arising is. Uh, the polar opposite to the Creator God. And the Dalai Lama was referring to this interdependent arising and said, we have that. But Michael Brick had already worked out before that Jesus did the same thing. The time of Jesus was very similar to the time of Buddha. There, were also, there was also the Creator God up on top. There was also the pyramid and on top were the high priests and uh, worst of all, they were fraternizing with the Romans because they could keep themselves only in power if they were friendly with the Romans. So it wasn't only 
the inner social structure that uh, that was offensive, as it was in the times of Buddha, or offensive to somebody who wanted an egalitarian uh, society, but it was also now the Romans and the foreign power that, that came into play. So G how did Jesus do away with it? He called the Creator Father. See? That we know for sure. We don't know too much historically about Jesus. We know all that we need to know, but not too much. But one thing that we know absolutely for certain is that he called God Abba. And that means Father with a very, in, with a very endearing term for Father. So Jesus was a mystic, and out of his mystic experience, he had this uh, expression of closest communion with the Creator God. The closest communion. Not that it was foreign to the Hebrew traditions. Uh, on the first page of Genesis, you read already that God uh, created us humans in God's image and likeness. See, so how much closer can you come? And breathe God's very life breath into this lifeless creature that God had made out of clay. So the, alive, the, the close connection with God was there, but in time it had developed into something very similar to what Buddha found at his time, this pyramidal stru pyramid structure with uh, the creator God on top and then the high priest uh, up uh, a little below. So Jesus did away by it because the creator God and we are one. See, how much closer can you be than father and son? And with us, father and son is still a little different from what it was for the Hebrews because for the Hebrews you would have to say mother and child. It was that close. And you see that, that, that Jesus speaks of the father like we would speak of a mother, very intimate. And in, in the Hebrew mentality, the son isn't, isn't even somebody else from the father. It's the father in another generation. It's so close. It's completely close. And so when Jesus speaks of God, as, of the creator God, as his daddy, as his papa, as his close, close father, uh, he also does away from that, with that separation and then creates the kingdom of God, uh, the, the community of his disciples that has again this completely egalitarian structure. Later this gets lost again and so we get the pyramidal structure again and very much emphasis on the God that separated from us to the point where in scholastic philosophy uh, we are taught that God has no real relation to the world. We have a real relation to God, but God has no real relation to... Well, that's philosoph philosophy and nobody takes it that seriously, but at least it is uh, carved in stone. That's there. God has no real relation to the world. So uh, we are now with the new God image immediately because nobody today can accept this kind of an image. So we are coming back to this God image. We can talk more about it. But out of this uh, insight, when the Dalai Lama said, there is this great distinction between us and, and, and you, uh, we uh, believe in interdependent arising and you have this creator God, I quickly said, no, Your Holiness, the interdependent arising itself is divine. Uh, and <clears throat> then I ran through in about 90 seconds something that I will share with you later in, in this context. And he was delighted and he said, uh, oh, this is great, this is great. He said, you have to write about that. <laughs> I have sort of the half, half the manuscript in my pocket anyway. <laughs> so, so I said, yes, Your Holiness, I will write about it if you write the foreword. Oh, yes, he said, I will write it. 